Hello, my name is Mark Zaletti. And I'm Nathaniel McGuire. And today we'll be looking at two pieces, one by Albert Joseph Moore. And one by Gilbert Stuart. This piece here was made by Albert Joseph Moore, and it's called The Dreamers, and he painted this in 1882. Like most other paintings, this is oil on canvas, and currently this piece is being held in the collection of the Birmingham Museum and Gallery in Chamberlain Square. So Nathaniel, what do you see in this piece? Well, Mark, I see three women who seem to be very tired, but they all kind of seem related somehow. That's because Albert used the same model three times over. He did this so that the lack of physical variety would cause the eye to skim over the entire canvas and so that you don't focus too much on one particular figure. Albert employs a dreamlike aspect to his work by using a consistent color palette only deviating from the cream color tone in the decorative objects of this piece, such as the carpet and couch. In all of his pictures, he avoided any approach to storytelling, which means we get to make our own story. Okay, Mark, what do you think is happening here? It's that moment when you're the last one awake at a slumber party. That's what I think is happening here. What do you see in this picture, Nathaniel? A nice comfy couch to sleep on. With the girls on it? It's 5 o'clock in the morning. It doesn't matter. Well, according to Sidney Colvin, Albert excelled in capturing beautiful people in beautiful situations. You can clearly see this in his other paintings, like this one, called Silver, made in 1886. This one's called Midsummer, painted in 1887. And this one's called A Summer's Night, painted in 1890. Albert really likes his women. He sure does. So Nathaniel, what's the next painting? Our next painting is the Lansdowne portrait of George Washington by Gilbert Stuart, painted in 1796. It was commissioned by the senator of Pennsylvania at the time, William Bingham. When you first look at this painting, you would think that it was meant to praise and honor George Washington for being a hero in the American Revolution and being our first president. But this was not the original purpose behind the commission at all. In fact, as soon as it was completed, it was given as a gift to the British Prime Minister to celebrate the unity of Great Britain and the United States. So this is about unity and not just about George Washington. That's correct. There is a lot of hidden meaning in this painting. Let's go over a few instances of that now. First of all, Mark, do you see anything out of the ordinary about his sword? Yeah, it seems too fancy for everyday use. That's exactly right. Stuart has replaced the battle sword that we usually see with Washington with the dress sword. By doing this, he is displaying the democratic form of government of the United States open to relations with Great Britain, instead of like in the earlier times of war. There is also this tension in the background of the painting. On the left, looming outside the window, are these dark clouds, and as we move to the upper right corner, we see a colorful rainbow. This can be assumed to reference the American Revolutionary War giving way to the peace and prosperity of the new United States. To me, the lake of the table is the second focal point here. Is there any significance to that? Yeah, it's really poking out from under the table skirt there. The table leg itself is painted to look like a fasces. A fasces is a grouping of rods bound together to keep them protected and is an ancient Roman symbol signifying strength and unity. This represents the real goal of this painting removing the tension between Great Britain and the United States, and promoting strength and unity. We're out of time for today, but thank you for listening to our special presentation. Goodbye. See ya.